Alright, what's up internet? So, dito sa Hardware Sugar, gumagawa kami ng iba't ibang PC para sa iba't ibang budget. And so, napansin namin na may mga madalas na errors or mistakes na yung request ng mga customer or nakabili na yung customer sa ibang shop and then dadalhin nila sa amin dito para ayusin. And then, napansin namin na mali yung configuration of parts. So, based on that experience, here are the top 5 PC building mistakes based on what we've seen. Number 1. Bibili ng overclockable CPU, pero hindi naman pang overclocking yung motherboard. Sinasadya talaga ng mga CPU manufacturers like AMD and Intel na may mga CPU na kayang i-overclock. Ano ba yung overclocking? Kung kotse yun, yung overclocking, pinapatakbo mo siya lampas dun sa rated manufacturer speed. So yung isang kotse, let's say, sabi ng manufacturer, yung kaya lang na yan hanggang 100 km per hour. Kung in-overclock mo siya, aabot siya ng 120 km per hour. And it's the same concept with CPUs. Halimbawa, yung Ryzen 7 3700X and the Intel i7 9700K, both of those CPUs run at 3.6 GHz, yung basic manufacturer speed. Pero kung in-overclock mo yung R7 3700X, kaya mong umabot ng mga 4.4 GHz. Yung Intel naman, yung i7 9700K, kung in-overclock mo yun, kaya mo siyang paabutin ng mga 5.2 GHz or so. So malayong malayo talaga yung rated manufacturer speed dun sa kaya mong abutin with overclocking. So okay, ba? Bili tayo lahat ng overclockable CPUs. How do we know kung overclockable ba yung CPU? It's just letters after numbers. You just need to look at the letter that comes after the numbers in the CPU designation. Again, in the example, para sa AMD, yung magic letter is X. If it has X in the designation, it is most likely an overclockable CPU. And again, in the example I used, the Ryzen 7 3700X, the X there denotes that yes, you can overclock it. Sa Intel naman, the magic letter is K. Kung may K yung Intel CPU, malamang pwedeng i-overclock yan. Like in the example I used, the i7 9700K. But we've seen builds where, and they come from other PC shops na binentahan nga yung customer ng overclockable CPU, Pero yung mali dun, para ma-overclock mo yung CPU, kailangan compatible yung motherboard. So, useless lang yung pagbili mo ng overclockable CPU, hindi mo ma-overclock yung CPU na yan. Nakastuck lang yan sa default speed of the manufacturer. If you buy an overclockable CPU, make sure that you get an overclockable motherboard. Paano mo malalaman kung compatible ba yung motherboard sa overclocking? Again, the secret is in the letters. Tingnan mo yung letter. For Intel motherboards, for the current generation of CPUs, malamang kung may letter Z sa pangalan ng motherboard, let's say Z370 or Z390, compatible yon for overclocking. Sa AMD, the magic letters are X and B. So if you get an X370, if you get a B350, most likely those motherboards will support overclocking. PC building mistake number 2, getting 1 stick of RAM instead of 2. So halimbawa, gusto mo kumuha ng 16GB of RAM para sa rig mo. And you can get 1 stick of 16. So 1 stick is 16GB of RAM. Or you can get 2 sticks of 8. 8GB eight and 8GB, eight total pa rin 16. And so they're both 16GB and you're wondering what's the difference or what should you get. You should always get at least 2 sticks of RAM. Kunin mo yung 2x8 or 2 sticks of 8 rather than 1x16 or 1 stick of 16. Because computers nowadays use something called dual channel memory. Pano dinesign yung computer systems, mas maganda yung dual channel kasi mas efficient yung pag allocate ng memory. It's a long technical description. Uh, I won't bore you and di ako, nagma, di ako magmamarunong dito na maintindihan ko but ba talaga mas mabilis yung dual channel. But basically, dual channel is better for you. You do see performance increases right away. In gaming where it's only just one application, supposedly the performance increase is not very noticeable. But for other applications such as video editing and things like that, you'll probably get like a 20-30% increase just because you use dual channel or just because you got 
two sticks of RAM instead of one. And I know, medyo nakakalito to, kasi kung isipin mo lang logically, hindi pa mas maganda yung 1X16 para mas konti yung RAM slots na gamitin ko para mas may space pa ako para mag-expand. And so this one, actually, I understand it's a, it's a bit confusing. But basically, the bottom line is just get two sticks of RAM instead of one stick. And again, these are the same RAM sizes. We're all we're just talking about here in the example 16 gigabytes. But again, you can break that down in so many ways. One stick of 16, two sticks of eight, or four sticks of four. That's overkill. You don't need that for dual channel. It's gonna confuse things. But basically the optimum configuration is two sticks. And that that's true regardless of RAM size, whether you want 32 gigabytes and get two sticks of 16 and so on and so forth. Building mistake number three also deals with RAM. RAM, like many PC hardware, comes with speeds. So you can get RAM in different speeds such as 2333 MHz, 2666 MHz, 3000 MHz, 3200 MHz, etc. So, baka isipin mo na, well, kunin ko na yung pinakamabilis, di ba? Para sa nakaya ng budget ko. But again, the problem here is the motherboard. Kasi yung motherboards, may maximum speed yan para sa RAM. Kung bumili ka ng mabilis na RAM, pero hindi naman supported nung motherboard mo, tatama lang siya dun sa maximum rated speed of the motherboard. For example, the MSI H310M Pro VH Plus. Popular na budget board yan. Uh, maganda naman yung performance. So isipin mo, yan na bilin ko na motherboard. And then pang RAM ko, kaya pa naman na budget, bibili ako ng 3200 MHz na RAM. And just there, nag ka ng pera. Because yung motherboard na pinili mo, yung MSI H310M, is only rated up to 2,666 MHz. Sayang lang yung 600 MHz or so, yung difference between 32 MHz and 2,666 MHz, kasi hindi mo magagamit yung extra speed. So very similar to overclocking your CPU, make sure that the RAM you get, the RAM speed you get, is compatible with the motherboard that you get. Otherwise, you'll just be wasting money. Building mistake number four is getting generic or cheap PSUs. Don't get me wrong, I have advised in the past na okay naman yung generic PSUs para sa mga computer na hindi naman talaga performance. Yung mga pang office, yung ginagamit mo lang pang surf ng internet or Word or Excel or things like that. Walang problema yung generic power supplies dun. But if you are doing an expensive build, yung pang gaming, pang video editing, pang rendering, hindi talaga kaya ng generic power supply. Medyo nakakatent kasi na ang mahal na ng gastos mo sa graphics card, mahal na sa CPU, mahal na sa RAM, baka naman kayang itipid na lang yung power supply unit. Don't, don't. Huwag mo tipirin yung PSU. Especially for higher-end rigs, all of your nice components like the GPU and things like that, they need a steady power supply to be able to meet their performance speeds. And if you don't get a good power supply from a good manufacturer, then you're just wasting your parts. And, and in the most extreme cases, we've seen generic power supplies basically blow up. And, I, you know, maswerte ka na lang kung okay pa yung ibang components, yung PSU lang yung nasira. So never, never scrimp, never, never cheap out on getting a good power supply. And kung kaya ng budget, we always recommend fully modular PSUs. Fully modular just means that you can remove the cables that you don't need to use. And so this improves airflow in the case because you don't have unnecessary wires cluttering the build. And also it looks better aesthetically for cable management because you have, again, you have less wires to worry about. So definitely get a good PSU from a reputable brand such as Corsair, Seasonic, Cooler Master. Um, and if the budget allows, get one that is fully modular. Last building mistake, not including an SSD. I understand, mahal talaga yung SSD. Kumpara natin kung magkano, let's say a 1 terabyte hard drive, usually kaya mo bilhin mga 2,400. Yung SSD, kung same price, 2,400, makukuha mo lang 500 gigabytes. Roughly, mga double the price yung SSD sa hard drive. Why am I recommending it? 
why am I saying that all builds, regardless kung pang office yan, pang gaming, pang video editing, lahat ng builds dapat may SSD. It's really a quality of life issue. Sobrang bilis nung SSD kumpara sa hard drive. Pag nakatry ka na nung SSD, hindi ka na talaga babalik sa hard drive. Ayaw mo nang bumalik sa hard drive. Things are so, so, so much faster on an SSD. Depende mo sa budget mo, you can just get a small SSD para sa OS, para pag boot up mo ng OS, sobrang bilis. And then you get a hard drive, 1 terabyte or so, for your files. And it's not true, paminsan may narinig ka na yung SSDs mas mabilis, masira kumpara dun sa hard drive. And that's not true at all. Actually, failure rates on SSDs are less compared to hard drives. For one, because SSDs have no moving parts. Para gumana yung SSD, walang gumagalaw sa loob niya. Kumpara sa hard drive where there's actually literally a spinning disk that goes round and round so that the computer can access your data. So there are more failure points within a hard drive compared to an SSD. So an SSD will last as long if not longer than a hard drive. And actually, you're already used to SSDs because your phone uses an SSD. And that's why it boots up so much faster compared to your other devices. I cannot emphasize this enough. Make room in your budget for an SSD. Bonus mistake on RGB. And usong uso yung RGB ngayon. Maraming nawiwili sa lights kasi kaya mo breathing kaya mo iba't ibang kulay, etc. Totoo, maganda nga tingnan. Bangis tingnan ng computer mo kung naka all red or whatever. Pero may masamang biro kasi yung mga techies na, you know, parang linilito nila yung mga non-techie friends nila. And I've heard it before na sinasabi nila na, oh, de, pang yung RGB, kung ilagay mo yung kulay sa red, mas mabilis computer mo. Kung lagay mo sa blue, mas malamig. And therefore, better. Kasi yung components mo, lower yung temperature, mas mabilis yung takbo nila. And, you know, <laughs> it seems kind of silly to even talk about it, but... Color is just color. Yung RGB, walang kinalaman yun sa performance. Kahit anong kulay linagay mo dun sa RGB setup mo, it will have... It has zero impact on your performance. Rainbow flashing does not mean better multi-threading setup. I mean, dam daming kalakohan na rumors or... You know, and the techie people know better, but it, it it's sort of like that old joke na gusto mo bumalis computer mo? Press, Control, Alt, Delete. I mean, it's super simple to people who are used to computers, but people who are just starting out with computers, you know, not too familiar with the software or the hardware, they really will press Control, Alt, Delete, or they really will set their RGB to red in the mistaken impression that this will make it faster. So, kung newbie lang po kayo, wag kayo mauto sa mga kaibigan nyo, mga jo si Raulo, color does not impact performance at all. So, top 5 building mistakes uh, that we've seen building computers here in the Philippines with a bonus explainer on RGB. Here at Hardware Sugar, we do builds of any budget um, from 30,000 onwards to 120, 150K. And you can come to us, we'll design the rig based on what you need. Is it for gaming? Is it for video editing? Do you want super bling bling RGB or do you not want RGB puke at all? We will guide you through the process. We will ask you for the parts. We will, it's, it's always a back and forth with us. We will ask the customer like, do you want this? And what do you think of this? And you can check out the playlist here on YouTube for some of the rigs that we've done. And if you're not in the market yet, if you just want to talk about hardware and things like that, we also do that as well. Pass by the shop or message us on Facebook or comment here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. So I hope that these basic tips help you. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. For your PC needs, consider buying from us, Hardware Sugar, at Lazada, or on our website. You can find links in the description below. And thank you for watching. See you next video.